how's everybody doing this evening back again with another video for you guys and gals and tonight what i have for everyone is my versus slash comparison video between the google pixel xl first generation and the iphone 6s plus okay so Tonight what we're going to do is we're going to compare and contrast the similarities and differences between both of these devices and then at the end of the video I'm going to give you guys and gals an overall recommendation or two and one thing that I want to preface before we dive into this everything that I'm getting ready to talk about and give you guys and gals my opinions on is just that my opinion y'all are free to disagree we can uh, we can respectfully disagree down below in the comments as long as you can do so respectfully. So I just want y'all to keep that in mind. Everybody's opinions are allowed to be different and we're all entitled to our own opinions. That being said, I did case up these two because your boy is a very clumsy individual. So if y'all want more close up looks at either of these devices, feel free to check out the full reviews of both of them where I took them out the case and talked about everything, which I'll link up down below in the video description. That being said, without further ado, let's jump into this versus slash comparison video. Now starting off, let's talk about the overall build quality and design of both of these. Now in terms of the overall build quality and design, these are both made out of the same materials basically. So we have our metal body with our glass front. In particular, the iPhone 6S Plus is a full metal unibody with a glass front, whereas the Pixel XL has a metal body, but it has a glass upper top portion here. That portion where the fingerprint sensor is built in is made out of glass. Then we have a metal back, and then we have a glass front, okay? So in terms of the overall build quality and design on both of these, I have to say they're both extremely good. But all of the buttons are very tactile and clicky on both. Okay, both devices have a nice balanced weight in the hands. So not too heavy, not too light. Feel really, really good. So I can't argue with the weight on either of these. They're both top notch. And the overall build quality on both of these is top notch as well. Didn't have any issues. And in terms of the overall design, I really do like the design on both of these devices. The 6S Plus has a more um, functional slash, uh, you know, <clears throat> utilitarian design to it. Whereas the Pixel XL is similar, but they give you a little bit of flash with that upper glass back portion. So overall, in terms of the build quality and design on both of these, I have to say they're both top notch. So if you're wondering which device that I prefer over the other, in terms of the overall build quality and design, I'm going to have to call this one a tie. Okay? Next. Next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals now is the overall displays on both of these devices. Now in terms of the displays, I just want to let y'all know up front, when I was using these guys side by side for the month that I've been using them, I pretty much ran them at the same exact setup. So indoors, it was about, uh, what, 25, 50%. Outdoors, it was about 80%. That's how I ran them based on where I was, whether I was in the house or out of the house, just so y'all know that. But in terms of the displays, both of these displays are 5.5 inches, okay? Now, they do differ in the display technology. The 6S Plus is a LCD display at a 1080p resolution, whereas the Pixel XL is a AMOLED display with a 2K resolution at a 1440p. So uh, iPhone 6S Plus, 1080p, okay? So that's um, 1080 by 1920, and the Pixel XL is 2K, so that's 2460 by 1440p, okay? So 500 plus pixels per inch over here, I think it's like 523 or something like that, and 400 plus pixels per inch over here for the screen densities. I think like 401 or 403, something like that. 
Now, if I make any mistakes, I go ahead and throw up the corrections in post because we're all about giving the most accurate information here. All right. But in terms of the displays, this is another area where I feel like both these manufacturers of these devices did a great job. So who wins in terms of the display category? I'm going to have to give this one also a tie. Okay. Now, moving on, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is I want to dive into the hardware and software a little bit deeper on both of these devices, okay? And this is where we're going to run into some of our first major differences, all right? Now, starting off when we talk about the hardware on these devices, the First off, let's go over the similarities first, okay? So, they both do not incorporate um, micro SD expansion. So, pretty much the storage that you get on these is the storage that you get. There's no way to expand the storage, alright? So, when you have devices like that, I always recommend you go for the highest storage variant available. So, that's the main similarity between these two. Now, Talking more about the hardware, the 6S Plus here comes in a few different storage configurations, but it has a max RAM um, on board of 2 gigabytes of RAM. But in terms of the storage configurations, it comes in 16, 32, 64, or 128 respectively, okay? Whereas if we talk about the storage on the Pixel, this one maxes out at 4 gigs of RAM and it comes in either 32 or 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, okay? Now, both of these devices have 12 megapixel rear facing cameras which tap out at a maximum recording resolution of 2K at 30 FPS. Both of these devices can record in um, 720p slow motion at 240 frames, okay? But the 6S Plus has the slight advantage because it can also do slow motion at 1080p at 120 frames per second. Okay? So there is that. Alright? Both of these devices do have their respective fingerprint sensors. The 6S Plus is on the front here, as you can see. So really fast fingerprint sensor here. Really responsive. Alright? And pretty much... Regardless of however I land my finger, it's just going to work. So really good stuff. Whereas opposed to the Pixel XL has it on the back. But still, it's still very responsive. So as you can see here, quick tap of the finger on it. And it opens the device right up. So the difference here is the placement. We got it in the middle on the Pixel, and we have it on the front on the iPhone. So that's the major difference in the placement. But in terms of the fingerprint sensor performance, they both perform top notch. Okay? Now, moving on, talking about more hardware between these. As I said, up front, they both have 5.5 inch displays. Again, Super AMOLED and IPS LCD. Okay? Again, 2K. 1080p just so y'all know now up front this is where we have another difference in these devices the iphone has a 5 megapixel front facing camera capable of recording up to 1080p at 30 fps whereas the pixel has an 8 megapixel front facing camera which is also capable of recording up to 1080p at 30 fps okay just so y'all know the differences and similarities there Okay, now another difference we have is the iPhone has the lightning charging port, okay, whereas the Pixel incorporates the USB Type C charging port, alright, but both devices have bottom firing speakers, okay, in pretty much the same location, so the speakers are right here, alright. Now, another difference is the iPhone has its 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom, okay? Whereas the Pixel has its 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the top, okay? So they both incorporate 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. It's just placed differently 
um, depending on the device that you decide to go with, okay? Now, more hardware, more similarities and differences here, okay? Now, in terms of the chipsets on these, the 6S Plus has the Apple A9 chipset, which is a dual-core chipset, and it's the GPU is the Power VR GT 7600, okay? Whereas on the Pixel, we have the Snapdragon 821 quad-core processor and the Adreno 530 GPU, okay? Now, in terms of the batteries on these, the iPhone 6S Plus or the 6S Plus has a 2750 milliamp hour battery on board, whereas the Pixel XL has a 3450 milliamp hour battery on board, okay? Just so y'all know there. Alright, now I do believe that does it for all the hardware on these two devices. Now if I forgot anything, uh, I will correct myself in post or if you feel like I left out anything, please leave it down below in the comments. Oh, both of these devices do also have NFC. Now the NFC on the iPhone is only going to be in use for Apple Pay. Whereas the NFC on the Pixel, you can use for just about anything. So, uh, pairing up Bluetooth devices, uh, Google Pay, so on and so forth. If you have anything that you want to take advantage of the, of the NFC for, it will work no problems on your Pixel. But, if you're going to use the NFC on the iPhone, it's only going to work with Apple Pay. Alright? Alright, so now I believe that goes over all of the hardware. Okay, now let's talk about the software, and this is where we get into another major difference when we talk about the software on these two devices. Now, the Pixel here is running the latest version of Android, Android 10, okay, whereas the iPhone here, the 6S Plus, is running the latest version of iOS, which is um, iOS 13.1.2, okay? So they're both running the latest versions of their company's respective operating systems, okay? So, and honestly, y'all, they have the same uh, software features on board. They just look really different now, or lack thereof, because the iPhone doesn't give you the uh, split window support or dual window support, so you can only really use one app at a time, whereas you can do dual window on your Android device, okay? But other than that, the features on these are pretty much the same, okay? Where they differ is the their approach to the software, okay? I like to think of Android as, as, Android as the customize it to your heart's content approach you can pretty much customize your device to where it's almost like an extension of your personality and you can get your device to do whatever you would like whereas i like to think of the uh ios devices as a more of a keep it simple stupid approach where it's a very streamlined experience and once you learn what everything is and you get it down it's going to work that way and it's not going to change so this is where the first major difference between these two OS's come into play. Do you want the more streamlined approach where you only have to learn something and get it down or would you rather have a more customized approach to your liking? Okay? Alright? That being said, both of these devices are really good when it comes to software updates and security patches. So that's one thing that you will not have to worry about between either of these, okay? That being said, I do believe iOS and Apple is a little bit faster with their security patches than Android. But for the most part, both of these devices are very good with pushing out security updates. So you don't have to worry about that, okay? So, I just wanted to point that out there. So, in terms of the overall hardware and software, what do I feel about this? Well, in terms of the software and the day-to-day -day performance, I have to say both of these devices perform pretty much 
perfectly. Now they do suffer from the occasional uh, app slowdown and the occasional app, app hiccup, but I'm very proud to report that I didn't get any app crashes on either of these. So the overall day-to-day -day software performance on either of these was top notch. That being said, which one do I prefer? If I had to pick one, you know, which one wins in the software department? Well, I'm going to have to call this one a tie because this pretty much comes down to personal preference. Honestly, I would recommend you try both of them. And after you've tried both of them for a little bit, then you decide maybe I'm all about the customizations and the Android and the software features. Or maybe I just want my device to do what I needed to do and get out of the way after I've learned everything that I needed to. So it's really up to you whether you want customization or you just want that streamlined approach, okay? So, but at least in my opinion, I'm going to have to call the software on both of these a tie. In terms of the hardware, I'm going to have to call it a tie as well. Really good hardware on either of these devices, okay? So that pretty much goes over the software and the hardware. Now, let's keep it moving. Up next now, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall Wi-Fi on these devices. And let's pull it up so you guys and gals can see some of the stats as I talk about it. But in terms of the Wi-Fi on both of these devices, they pretty much have the exact same loadout. So both devices support Wi-Fi 802.11 B, G, and N, and AC, which means they both support dual band Wi-Fi Wi-Fi at either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz band Wi-Fi respectively. And I gotta tell you guys, in terms of the overall Wi-Fi performance, both of these devices have done a great job. Y'all can see the Wi-Fi performance on either of these is top notch. And I didn't really have any issues and you can see the numbers pretty much line up very similarly here, okay? That being said, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a video here, a YouTube video, so y'all can see how the Wi-Fi performs in real time. And I've already preloaded it so y'all can get an idea of the memory management on both of these devices. Okay? Now, what I'm also going to do is this Wi-Fi test will also double as a speaker test as well. So y'all will get an idea of how these speakers sound on either of these devices. After we do that, I'm going to let y'all know how I feel about the speaker performance and the placement on either of these devices, and then we're going to keep it moving. All right, so starting off, the first device that I'm going to start with is going to be the 6S Plus. Now, I've already maxed out both devices to their maximum volume. As you can see here, just let me double check for y'all so you can see the volume there is maxed out. And over here on the Pixel... Just so you can see, volume is also maxed out over here. All right, so that being said, I do have some copyright free music pulled up. And let's go ahead and push play. Pixel now, do the same thing, push play.
Okay, let's check the Wi-Fi performance now. Let's scrub through the video a little bit. Go back to the 6S Plus. Okay, now let's go over to the Pixel. Do the same thing. Okay. So there you guys and gals have it. Real quick Wi-Fi test, real quick speaker test as well. Now, how do I feel about the overall Wi-Fi performance and how do I feel about these speakers? Now in terms of the overall Wi-Fi performance, I'd have to say it's top notch on either of these devices. Didn't have any issues with the overall Wi-Fi. Now, in terms of these speakers, how do I feel these devices did? Well, the overall speaker performance on either of these, I would have to say, is really good. They both get very loud and they stay very crisp and clear throughout with little to no distortion at maximum volume. That being said, I'm not a big fan of the placement of the speakers on either of these devices. As you guys and gals saw via the demonstration, it's extremely easy to muffle and or obstruct. So I would have preferred to have seen front facing speakers on either of these devices, but it is what it is. Overall performance, however, is really, really good. Now, let's keep it moving. Up next now, the next thing I wanna talk about with you guys and gals is the LTE and the available bands on either of these devices. Now, both of the devices that you guys and gals see in front of you here are globally unlocked devices. So what does that mean? That means that they can work on any major carrier in the States and any GSM carrier abroad. So T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, you name it, it will run. All you have to do is drop that SIM card in and you should be good to go. Now, if any, if you, if any of this is unclear, I'll throw up the screenshot in post, but this is what I'm talking about. Now, if I was given the option, I would always recommend globally unlocked devices to you guys because that, that gives you the freedom to choose whatever carrier you would like, okay? So you get a nice globally unlocked device and you take it to whatever carrier you would like. So in terms of the overall LTE and band supported on these devices, I'd have to say it's a tie and it's going to be top notch on either one. Okay, now this is the globally unlocked version of the Pixel, but this is a Verizon unlocked uh, version of the 6S Plus. Just so you guys and gals knew, if you wanted to do some research for yourself, just had to point that out there. Okay, now let's keep it moving. That was fairly quick. Up next now, let's talk about the Bluetooth on both of these devices. Now, if I'm not mistaken, both of these devices do have Bluetooth 4.2 on board. Now, if I make a mistake, I'll go ahead and correct myself in post, like I always do. But I do believe it's Bluetooth 4.2 on both of these. And I got to tell y'all, in terms of the overall Bluetooth performance, I haven't had any issues with either of these devices. So y'all can see and get an idea of just how many devices I've connected up here. Let me get that to focus a little bit so y'all can check that out. This is the 6S Plus. And then here we have the Google Pixel XL. Okay, again, check that out. So fairly the same number of devices. And as I said, no issues with the overall Bluetooth performance. And this is a big category for me. As you know, your boy out here trying to live that hashtag wireless lifestyle. We don't want to snag no cables. We don't want to break no headphones. It's all wireless, baby. That's how we roll. So Bluetooth here has to be top notch. And I'm very happy to report that it's top notch 
on either of these devices. Next, next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals now is the overall GPS and the GPS performance. And this is another area that I feel has to be top notch, especially if I'm considering a device to be my daily driver. And this is also another area where I have to say both of these devices performed pretty much perfectly and I didn't have any issues with the overall GPS performance. So top notch marks for the Bluetooth, top notch marks for the GPS as well, turn by turn navigation, whatever. Anything that needs to take advantage of the GPS module is going to work without issues on either of these devices. All right, now let's keep it moving. Next, let's talk about the call quality and speaker call quality on both of these devices. Now, I will say this. This is very um, location-based and very carrier-based. So depending on your carrier, your results may vary. But at least for me, I tested these bad boys on the same carriers, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. And I got to say this, the... The call quality through the onboard receivers on either of these was really good. It was very loud, crisp, and clear, and I didn't have any issues. Now, on T-Mobile, I did have an issue on both of these, but that's because my T-Mobile coverage in the area where I stay and frequent is not the best. But AT&T, Verizon, no issues in terms of the call quality. It was very crisp, clear, and loud. Didn't have no problems with calls dropping. No problems with callers saying they couldn't hear me on the other end. Everything was nice and smooth. Same thing can be said of the speaker performance while taking phone calls on these. Very smooth, crisp, clear, loud. No problems. Okay? So overall call quality and speaker call quality on these bad boys is top notch. Okay? So that's another tie. If you guys and gals are wondering, we're pretty much tying down the whole list. Okay? So... Moving on, <clears throat> next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals now is my overall experience with the cameras on these devices. Now, I've done separate dedicated camera walkthroughs and uh, photo and video samples on both of these. I'll link it up in the cards and I'll also link it down below in the video description if you guys and gals would like to check those out and learn a little bit, no a little bit more, feel free to uh, hit up the cards or check out the links down below in the video description. That being said, how do I feel about the overall camera performance on both of these devices? Well, for a straight up point and shoot photo performance, I'd have to give the slight edge to the Google Pixel, okay? Now, side by side snapping photos with both of these devices, I did notice that it takes me a little bit more time to line up a good shot with the 6s plus than it does with the pixel so in overall point and shoot photo performance i'm gonna have to give the edge to the google pixel all right that being said if we're talking about point and shoot video performance both of these devices did a great job as long as you have adequate lighting for both all right next talking about audio recording and audio performance while in video both of these devices did a great job yet again, and they both support external audio recording. So all you have to do is plug up your external audio into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and you should be good to go. So whether you're trying to do a point and shoot photo, point and shoot video, or you're trying to get some really good audio for whatever you're working on, maybe you got a podcast, maybe you're trying to do a voiceover, whatever, you should be good to go with either the cameras on either of these devices. That being said, I do have to give the Pixel, again, the slight edge and overall photo performance, but everything else, in my opinion, when we talk about the cameras, is a tie. All right? Now, let's keep it moving, y'all. Up next, next thing I want to talk, talk about with you guys and gals now is the overall gaming performance. Now, I've yet again did a separate dedicated gaming performance video and I'll link it up in the cards and I'll link it down below in the video description for you guys and gals to check out. But both of these devices did a great job 
when it comes to the gaming, as long as I was mindful of whatever apps I had running in the background, didn't really have any issues with the overall gaming performance on either of these. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that you start doing some graphically intensive games and your battery will drop like nobody's business. So that's one thing that I want to point out. Okay, but overall gaming performance on either of these was top notch. Okay, now next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall benchmarks and benchmark performance. Now, this, this one I'm not inclined to show y'all the stats because they differ so drastically. And for iOS, you can only really run two benchmarks. Whereas for Android, you have a plethora of different benchmarks you can run. But that being said, in regards to the similar benchmarks between both platforms, the iOS device has it hands down, okay? So at least on paper or in terms of synthetic benchmarks, Apple, y'all yeah, got the straight W for that one, all right? So that pretty much goes over the benchmarks. Now, if you want to see the raw synthetic benchmark numbers, again, feel free to check out the links to the full review. I'll link it down below in the video description so y'all can see all the raw synthetic benchmark numbers for either of these devices. All right, but let's keep it moving. Up next now, let's talk about the overall battery life on these and the overall charge times on these. Now, if we're talking about overall battery life, these pretty much line up exactly the same. Now, with heavy usage, I'm getting through the day, but I need, I need at least two charges to three charges, depending on how heavy my day is, all right? With light to moderate usage, I'm getting through the day with about, what was it, about 30%, okay? So, that's not bad, all right? Putting that into perspective for you guys, talking about overall screen on times, that means that I'm getting anywhere from about five and a half hours of screen on time to about seven and a half screen, seven and a half hours of screen on time, eight hours if I push it, push it down into single digit percentages left. Okay, just so y'all get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, I couldn't really do good screenshots and get accurate battery examples for the iOS device. So because I can't show it for one, that means I'm not gonna show it for the other one. We gotta keep it fair around here, okay? Can't do it on one, so I can't do it on the other one. It is what it is. But that's that should give y'all an overall general idea of my battery life and stats for you guys and gals. Just take my word for it, please. That being said, I am an extremely heavy user, so you guys and gals' results may vary. I just want to point that out as well, okay? We all use our devices differently, so we all should get different results, all right? Now, next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall charge times. And this is where I got to give the straight hands down W to the Google Pixel XL. Now, the Google Pixel XL supports rapid charging through the USB Type-C port, and it's a, it's a direct power delivery rapid charging via USB Type-C, whereas the iPhone has the fast charging via the Lightning charging port, all right? That being said, you do not get fast charging for your iPhone out of the box, you do have to purchase a separate third-party adapter, and I would recommend a se separate third-party cable so you get the absolute fastest charging performance out of your iPhone, okay? Whereas Google, they was being nice. They give you the fast charging brick and the cable out of the box, so no third-party accessories needed here, all right? Just wanted to point that out. Now, in terms of the overall charge times with the Google Pixel, it's taking me anywhere. Calm down, son. It's taking me anywhere from about an hour and 50 minutes to reach a full charge to just over two hours to reach a full charge. Now, with the iPhone 6S Plus, it's taking me anywhere from two and a half hours to three hours to reach a full charge, okay? So, completely dead, just over two hours on the Pixel, completely dead three hours on the iPhone. 
Alright, and just so y'all can get the general idea of the battery health on both of these, let's go ahead and pull that up right now. So, for the Pixel, I'm going to get this loaded up and go to health. So y'all can see that, bam. And then for the iPhone, we're going to get this loaded up and we're going to go to health as well. So we go in here, we go down to battery. All right, right there, and then we wait for this to load up, and we tap on health. Okay, just so y'all can get an idea of what these batteries are at. So, these are both used, by the way. Okay, so you can see for the Pixel, we're at about 86%. And to put that into a numbers perspective for y'all, it started out with a 3450 milliamp hour battery, and we look, we're down to 86%, so that means we are down to 2978 um, milliamp hours, okay? All right. And then over here on the 6S Plus, when I picked this one up, it was at 88%, okay? Now, they don't give you that overall breakdown on iOS, but now, after about a couple months of usage, it's at about 81%. So y'all got to do the math on that one. It has a 2750 milliamp hour battery and it came at 88% and now it's down to 81%. Okay, my bad. Bumpy cam y'all. Apologize. So that's so y'all can get an idea of the overall battery health on both of these devices. Okay, good. But in terms of the overall uh, charge times, again, then I have to get this one to the pixel. In terms of the overall battery life, I'm gonna have to call this one a tie. Alright? So good stuff there. Next, next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals now is now we've reached the end of the video, and this is where I want to talk about pricing and give you guys and gals my overall final thoughts and a recommendation or two. Now, let's get the, uh, the straightforward stuff out of the way. I picked up the Google Pixel from Amazon, and I picked it up for roughly about $150 after tax. I'll have the screenshot up in post, so y'all know exactly what I paid for this. It also came with a screen protector already installed, thanks to the seller. I really do appreciate that, because y'all don't know how hard it is to install a screen protector properly. So really good stuff there. Check out that screenshot if you'd like to know what seller I got it from and again how much I paid for it. Whereas with the iPhone 6S Plus, I also picked this one up from Amazon, okay? This one was about 215 after tax, okay? So 150 215. Again, 128 gigabytes, no expandable storage. Uh, 64 gigabytes, no expandable storage. Now, that being said, depending on where you go to find these, you will find either of these devices ranging in about the same price point. So it's going to range anywhere from about $150 to $250 respectively based on condition, seller, and where you choose to buy it from. Okay? And I'll leave those links down below in the video description so y'all will get the absolute best pricing and availability for both of these devices. Now, now that we've gotten all that stuff out of the way, which one would I recommend? Mm. Now, this is probably one of the toughest recommendations that I've ever done on the channel because so much of this comes down to personal preference. So first off, if we take away personal preference and we just talk about price, you can actually get the Google Pixel in the max storage variant for a lot cheaper than you can get the iPhone 6S Plus, okay? But if you look around, and I'm just, I'm just saying that if you, let's say you go to eBay, you find a seller that has a five-star rating and you just hit purchase, you don't do any other searching around, it's going to run you. A little bit expensive over here for the iPhone, whereas it's generally going to be a little bit cheaper for the Pixel. That being said, if you do a little bit of research, as I said, you can find them for the same price. Now, 
Just talking about pricing, I have to give the recommendation to the Google Pixel. Putting pricing aside, again, I would recommend that you go into the store, you pick up each of the devices, and you play around with them, okay? Now, if you want to check out a Google Pixel, granted it's going to be a newer Google Pixel, you can get these from Verizon. You go into the Verizon store, you play with the display unit, you figure out if you're going to enjoy it or not. iPhones, the iPhone experience has pretty much been the same. Um, the only difference it, with the iPhone experience is the Face ID and the new navigation gestures if you decide on what if you want to check out a newer iPhone but other than that the overall experience is the same again I would recommend you go into the store and it could be any store because iPhones are available anywhere play around with them and you decide whether or not you're gonna enjoy that okay so that's my two cents there if we're going straight off price I would recommend the Google Pixel. If we're going over, going based off of which one I think is better, it comes down to personal preference because it's basically a difference in the ecosystem and the operating system, okay? So you've really got to try it out and decide for yourself, okay? That pretty much does it for this versus slash comparison video here today or this evening, guys and gals. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video and or found it helpful. If you did enjoy this video or you found it helpful in any way, shape, form, or fashion, please help your boy out and give the video a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You don't know how much, okay? If you would like to see more content like this, also feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and click off the notification bell icon right next to it so you guys and gals get notified when I publish new videos. As always, if this video piqued your interest and you'd like to know where you can pick up either one of these devices for yourself at some really great prices, all the links to where you can pick up either one of these devices at some really great prices will be available down below in the video description, as well as links to all of my other video coverage and all of the all of my recommended accessories. All that good stuff will be linked up down below in the video description. So as always, the video description should be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals, and you should be good to go. This whole video here this evening was recorded using the rear-facing 16 megapixel camera on the S6 Active in 720p resolution at 30 FPS and all the audio for this video here this evening was recorded using the Comica V30 Lite shotgun style microphone. So please let me know what you think of the overall video quality and the overall audio quality down below in the comments. Your feedback as always is greatly appreciated. And I do want to apologize for the lighting because couldn't really sleep. So y'all know what I do when I can't sleep, I make videos. So I do apologize if y'all think this lighting isn't the best, I apologize for that. But we get these videos in where we get these videos in. Alright, hope everyone has a great evening, and I will catch you guys and gals in my next video. Peace everyone. With my Oompa Loompa orange hands. Wow man, gotta work on this lighting. We out of here. Peace y'all.